Hi everybody, welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and today <clears throat> we start the 148 scale Special Hobby Buker BU-181 Bestman kit number SH-48120. So, um, I looked at it a little bit in the... Uh, in the last video, the intro video for this kit, and I'm uh, going to move right on into this. So, first thing we got is uh, step one, which is assembling the cockpit area. So what I'm going to do, so as not to bore you to death, I'm going to start removing these parts from the sprues and get them all ready for assembly. And then talk a little bit about it. Now, real quick here before I get too far, here's something to uh, take note of if you're building this kit. And my plan here is to kind of do a pretty thorough build uh, review of this kit, just because it's kind of a small run type deal, I guess. And uh, there's not really a whole lot out there as far as this particular kit. So I want to kind of run through it and check out any potential you know shortcomings or things to look at if one were to build this so the first thing to take note is the sprues are marked with a letter however each individual part there are no numbers indicating what the parts are now there's not a whole lot here so it should be very easy to figure out what parts are what but if you're not really sure or if you do like just having stuff numbered, it does number it on this plastic part uh, map right here. For example, the seats are both A17. That's A17, but they aren't marked on here. So just something to take note of while you're working on this kit. So I'll continue cutting these parts out here and then uh, get it ready for uh, assembly. Okay, I've got all the uh, parts cut out here. And another thing to take note of with this kit is there are no locating pins. Not much in the way of lo locating marks or anything like that. Um, and that was one thing I read in the reviews that I did find. For example, on the, the uh, fuselage here, there are no locating pins or holes. So there's a lot of alignment to do and careful, careful cementing, okay? So I will get to that later when I do uh, the fuselage. But same thing goes for the uh, actual cockpit and parts. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is uh, there are a lot of um, seam marks and... shouldn't call them seam marks, parting lines, stuff like that from the two halves of the uh, the sprue or the uh, the molds. So you need to look for those and make sure you get them buzzed off with a sanding stick or something so they don't show up when you do any painting and or weathering later. Okay, now the, the cockpit really is very, very simple. There's not a lot to it. So... Um, It's going to be pretty easy so let's get the old now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to assemble the whole cockpit and then I'm going to spray it uh, with the interior color and then I will do the seat belts later just before I install it in into the uh, to the fuselage so First things first, cement on there, get this on there before it dries. And it does have a stopping point right there, because that little bit there is where the, uh, the seat belts will go. Again, there is no locating 
tabs, no pins, no nothing. So you just kind of got to use a little bit of uh, eyeballing. Now the really tricky part is going to be these right here. These parts right here, A7, are pretty tiny. And uh, again, with no locating pins, it's going to be kind of tricky, but it won't be too bad. There's like little two raised spots on each side. It's for the rudder pedals, so you'll just want to, uh, you know, kind of eyeball it. <clears throat> and let them dry really well before you uh, attempt the... And this is how I am going to do it. I'll put my cement on the bottom of the part, set it in place, and position it, and then let it cure up really well before I try and install the foot straps. Make sure it's lined up as good as possible and you know keep in mind you're probably not going to see much of this cockpit once it's all assembled into the fuselage but you do want it to be halfway decent That's pretty straight. Again, being being a small run kit, from what I've read, it's a small small run, short run, whatever you want to call them. It's not going to be really refined like a mass-produced kit like Tamiya or Hobby Boss or anything like that. So it's going to take a little bit of uh, a little bit of patience. And a little bit of skill. I'll be able to tell you once I get done with this if I would recommend it for a beginning modeler. Sometimes, you know, things can be a little tricky, but with a little patience, okay, there you go. They're pretty straight. So there's that part there. Then, again, the seats not a whole lot of precision here he just set them in place kind of center them up and uh put them on like that now i'm not sure how flat that sits so in this case i'm going to use my thicker cement to make sure i get some good contact Yeah, I don't even know if it's contacting the back there. Mm, yeah, it is. So what I'll do, put those in position there. And then I'll just, since it's touching on the bottom, I'll put some, to me, extra thin. 
underneath. So it's nice and solid. So I'm going to let those pieces cure up for a second. Then I'll come back and I'll install the uh, side panels, control stick, and this cross member here. Okay, um, I glued the control sticks in place. And then <clears throat> this part here. Looks like fits across here. In front of the seats. Like that, I guess. It's not real precise, but that's the way it goes. So looking at the uh, instructions there, yep. That's how it goes. And then these parts here fit on the sides. Before I do that, I need to do the straps for the rudder pedals. So, cut those out real quick. And I'll have to find something that is about that small diameter. Let's try this. So I want it to be somewhat springy and kind of fit in place without me having to hold it too much. So that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. So what I'll do is I'll bend these four things up. I will put them in place because tension will hold it. And then I'll put a little dab of uh, super glue on there. So let me get these cut out. Here are the straps cut off and bent into shape. And I already have one in place. as you can hopefully see right there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each one on then I'm going to use this with my after I get it lined up the way I want it I'm going to use this with the uh, fine tip on it and Put a little dab on there thusly that way whenever I put the other one on I don't risk knocking this one off okay so I'll let that set up and then I can do the next one but really not too hard because all I did All I did was I held it on one side. Hopefully I can do this. Whoops. It's a little bit tricky. And if you don't have a steady hand or if you drink too much coffee in a day. But there you go. Just like that. And then just position it. 
like so. <clears throat> there you go, just like that. Okay, so uh, I'll put these other two on. All right, a little bit of work's been done since the last segment. As you can see here, I have um, worked, I sprayed the cockpit RLM 66 as well as the instrument panel and I applied the decal and used um, solve set to get it settle in there good so I'm gonna have to trim off this little bit of um, decal film around the edge and that will be completed so what I did is since this thing has no locating pins I went ahead and I glued the rudder tail the tail section the rudder and the uh, tail and this seam here and it needs a little bit more sanding to make it perfectly smooth but even on aircraft with locating pins I like to do it a section at a time now I also did it that way so I could fit this inside of here once I'm done with it um, and the reason I did it that way is I needed to make sure all this kind of lined up inside of here since there's no locating pins so as you can see this is nice and flexible this will pop in there I've already done it and then I can cement that in place and the uh, instrument panel before I glue all this up then I will just simply mask this part off the inside of the cockpit when it comes time to spray the rest of the stuff. Now I've been working on the wings and I've got this one wing done and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, trimming and stuff like that to get these to fit just right but you know as you can see there's a bit of a gap but I should be able to minimize that with a little bit of sanding and um, a decent amount of cement but you know again it's not going to fit perfectly because it's a short run kit and uh, you know with a little bit of work I can get it to where I want it but what I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to have to probably going to use one of my curved blades like this one here and carefully scrape away on these inner surfaces here not touching these outside edges so I can uh, make sure that's not obstructing the fit onto the fuselage and I may have to do it a little bit on there as well although it does look really really flat these parts here so maybe just a little bit um, where the actual slot is so I make sure I don't have any anything you know pressing weird but anyway that's that so what I'm doing is I'm working on the the uh, seat belts right now and what I'm doing is I'm cutting out um, the back sections and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint those once I get them installed um, normally I like to paint that stuff before but I think I'm going to do it uh, after I get them installed just to make it easier and then I'll have to do some weathering in here to get it kind of uh, ready to go inside of the fuselage but doing these I'm just using tweezers to pre-bend these to where these parts the mounts sit flat on the back of the uh, seat uh, pre-bending the um, the curve so they sit down inside of there to where it looks like they're draping naturally so I'm going to do the back ones and then I'll do the sides um, after I get those in and painted so I'm going to cut those off work on those a little bit more and then we'll take a look and see where I am <coughs> 
All right, so let's take a look here at what we got going on. So I got the fuselage um, cemented here and the whole bottom. And as you can see, I put a nice little, uh, I sealed it all up really good with the Tamiya Extra Thin. So I'm going to have to let that dry. I'm going to let that cure really, really good so I can finish sanding those parts. I've got this done. The cockpit fit in just fine. Um, no problems. And then this back panel here, there's a little bit of gap going on here. But with the uh, rear part of the canopy going on there, you're not really going to be able to see it. That's why I didn't worry about filling in or anything. Um, seat belts, those went fine. Um, instrument panel looks pretty good. The decals lined up really well. They fit fine. Uh, I tested one of the wings and I did a little bit of uh, extra sanding or actually scraping right in here with this blade because it's a little uneven which uneven is not that bad it's just kind of high in some spots so it actually fits together on there pretty nicely as you can see there so with a little bit more work I should be able to avoid too much filling with putty or anything. As a matter of fact, yeah, it looks pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other wing. Now the other wing, the edges don't fit near as good. So I'm going to let that cure up and then I'm going to use some sprue goo to make sure all those voids in the edges are filled in. To minimize the amount of gaps. Get rid of those gaps and stuff. So I'll be doing that. So my thoughts so far on the kit are this. Um, it's a it's a cool kit. I like the subject matter. It does go together relatively well considering it's a short run kit. Uh, as far as recommendation for a beginner or anything like that, I would say probably not for a strict beginner. Um, few kits, especially few aircraft kits because of their particular needs in comparison to stuff say like say armor or anything like that it wouldn't be too difficult um, it does take a lot of test fitting and trying trial and error to make sure where things are going to go and where things line up and all that because otherwise uh, you're, you're in for some problems so um, whenever I get completely finished I'll do a brief conclusion as to as to the order and the way I did things as far as assembly but so far um, at least for me I found that the best way to do it is to get the two parts together the two fuselage halves together and then back here of the tail and then down here and then leave this flexible here so you can pop the um, cockpit into place because it kind of helps hold it where it needs to be because it has to line up a certain way on the back here in order for this piece to fit now I did all another thing I had to do is on this piece right here a 15 I did have to slightly sand and trim this edge so it would fit in here it was just a little bit wide but again it was really easy the plastic it's not real soft it's a good plastic it's not soft nor is it brittle but it seems to sand really well um 
that may sound kind of weird, but some plastics seem to kind of gall a little bit as opposed to sanding smoothly. And this stuff, this stuff sands really well, especially for the, the amount of sanding you have to do. So while all this stuff's curing, and before I get into the uh, um, engine, the resin engine parts and exhaust and all that, I'm going to let all this stuff cure up really well. So I'm going to call this video quits right here, and then I'll come back in the next part and pick up with uh, the engine, um, the cowling, you know, the nose of the plane, uh, what I'm doing with the wings and the stabilizers, and then it'll be on to the landing gear. So there's not a whole lot left to do, just taking a little bit longer due to the uh, fitting and finagling with the parts. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And if you have any questions or comments on this kit in particular or what's going on here, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So until next time, I will see you all later.